that would be the perfect troll is to have black people wearing apes and, and wearing chains with apes on them and making that be a symbol of wealth. Wouldn't that be the funniest shit in the world to a racist? Creator of Board A Yacht Club, Yuga Labs, is suing Ryder Rips. That's Ryder Rips. Ryder Rips for seeking to devalue the brand. He's not a YouTuber. He's doing that because he doesn't like the narrative. All right, guys, we are here on the Get Your Ass Up show. Um, a couple weeks back, you guys heard me uh, sit down with Damon Dash. And uh, when I first met Dame, we were sitting back in the uh, dressing room and uh, we were having a conversation about uh, the Board 8 Yacht Club. Mm -hmm. And um, I had heard a lot of, uh, of the Philly on previous video that came out, but I kind of watched it very from a, uh, I got a bag yeah. already yeah. with uh, the apes. So I, I, I didn't really watch it fairly. Mm -hmm. You were skeptical, and which I is I was fine. skeptical. <clears throat> I did, uh, after leaving, I didn't watch the complete video. I probably watched about the first 45 minutes. Uh, and I saw so many similarities and traits of things. I was like, man, is, this is like a big conspiracy theory-ish feel. It's like what it gave me. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, you know, I meet Dame, and Dame is uh, sitting in the locker room. He's telling me about uh, the troll. And uh, as he begins to explain why his logic is what his logic is, I kind of become a little bit more receptive of the troll. And then it kind of made me think about my other experiences in the NFT space. And it comes from, I purchased a Jungle Freak. And then, uh, you know, the buzz behind a lot of NFTs comes before you find out a lot about the uh, artists and the uh, the other the other things behind a, a lot of these projects right. that are, you know, either racist or has some sort of uh, pedophilia or some type of something going on in the background that like are hitting Hidden and by either the artists or or, or the, the creators of these projects, right. and um, now I'm sitting down with Dame and I'm hearing like this whole idea of of uh, the the troll and what the art was created for, and then I'm like, wow, let me go back and look at this again. Mm -hmm. And he mentioned writer rips, and he goes, yeah, man, I sat down with writer rips, so I said. For me to get a better understanding, and we kind of like, I wanted to be fair because like, even though I own a board ape, I've been hearing so much of this. This became a big thing. I mean, even on my Twitter uh, uh, feed, guys found the Dame interview and it became pretty, pretty popular topic where I, it was a lot of retweets and things that came off uh, mm -hmm. Dame's uh, feedback during that podcast. So I was like, man, let me reach out to writer. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate you coming on the show, man. So thank you so much for joining yeah, the Get yeah. Your Ass Up show. Um, first and foremost, who is Ryder Rips? Um, yeah, I mean, I'm, a, I'm an artist and designer. I've worked in uh, the music industry mostly for about 12 years. Uh, I'm from New York City. And uh, most recently, I've, I've been uh, doing NFT art okay. uh, for a little over a year, uh, probably almost two years now, actually, time goes by fast. But um, before that, uh, you know, I, I've definitely had more of a focus on the digital side, uh, on internet culture. And I've, I've made, uh, beyond the design work that I've done with a lot of different musicians, I started my uh, music career working for MIA, uh, making websites and graphics with her. And then that just basically led one thing after the next. I started working with a lot of different musicians. Um, I most recently work with Tyga and uh, Tame Impala. I've worked with Travis Scott and uh, Kanye West and Pop Smoke, R.I.P. and uh, a I lot of Pop Smoke for sure. <clears throat> and um, a lot in just design world overall. I worked with uh, Virgil, R.I.P. Um, and so uh, Ryder Rip ain't just like some some internet troll. No, uh, no. You you actually have. <laughs> I mean, I, to be honest with you, I'm actually kind of like more of like a behind the scenes guy. Uh, I never really w made a huge effort to like be, you know, like extremely like like put my name on T-shirts or anything like that. 
Um, and so uh, a lot of times, like, people don't, you know, people in the industry might know me, you know, uh, but but normal people, like, you know, might not not know that I'm behind, like, some of the biggest, uh, not so, a lot of the biggest brands. Like, I, I branded this company named 88 Rising, which is a large uh, Asian media company. I did all their logos and, and just, like, built the, the original team and stuff. And I've worked on uh, V-Files, which is, like, another fashion uh brand that uh started in new york around 2011 and uh i've worked uh, a lot with like like the first um company that heron preston and and uh, matt williams and virgil had was called bentrill and i did like their website and, and graphics and stuff for them very cool and that's how i kind of got into the mix actually that was that was that was probably like one of the big breakthroughs because that was like 2013 and then yay actually saw that website and was like, who made this? I want to meet them. And then, like within a few days, I was I was on a plane, like in his living room, just like talking, and, and we we connected from that. So, um, yeah, my work. Like working with Kanye. Uh, I I love working with Kanye, and I and I think he's such a he's such a raw creative uh, in in a real sense, uh, in the sense that. Uh, you know, there, there's nothing, there's nothing that that will, that will stop him in terms of getting out his creativity, and he doesn't see any bounds between, you know, like music and fashion and ideas. Like, like these are all, these are all things that that are, are in unison, basically. You know what I mean? And and he's been basically preaching that since the beginning of his career. Like, I'm not just a producer, I'm a rapper. You know what I mean? And people were were trying to give him the brick wall and say and put him into a box and pigeonhole. And I think uh, the, what he is going against is is basically a, a, something that a lot of people who are truly creative feel, which is they don't want to be pigeonholed. They want to be able to express themselves in a multitude of ways. They want to they want to be free and in, in, in totality and not be put in a box and seen one way. So I love working with Ye because I, I kind of identify with that myself because I've worn a lot of hats and um, and and I and I also think that as a creative, it's like. You want to do the opposite thing as as being someone in a cubicle. Like you don't want to be the person behind the desk. Right. You know what I mean? You don't want the exact same routine, the exact same corporate life, over and over again, living the same day over and over again, like Groundhog Day. Like as a creative, you want to keep pushing yourself to new heights and and learn new things. Uh, and because life is a journey, like like he he talks about, you know, like how. Uh, adults are stifled, like compared to children. You know what I mean? Like, like you get on a desk and scream, like, and, and a kid can do that, and, and and that's acceptable. But an adult can do it can't do that, and and, and if an adult does that, they'll see they'll, they'll be called crazy and stuff like that. So, um, you know, I th I think if you if you keep that uh, childlike uh, sensibility of of creativity, then you 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 are pursuing life to its fullest because life isn't meant to be like oh I'm 18 now I'm going to live the same day over and over again for the next 60 years, like that's that's not what life should be. I mean at right. least that, at least to me, agree. you know yeah. what I mean. So so I think um, you know uh, uh, creative basically uh, the kind of creativity that I love at least is someone who uh, embraces that to the fullest, and and that can be so many things, but. To me, you know, if you're if you're an athlete and you want to become a painter or you're a musician and you want to design furniture or, you know, all that stuff to me makes perfect sense. Like it's not even a reach. Uh, of course, like you might have to learn some new skills, but but the core essence of the thing and like like your your desire to do it and why you why you want. Yeah. Why you want to do it is your desire to do it. Um is is pro is the same right like you want to express yourself if it's a beat or if it's a chair or if it's a you know uh t-shirt or whatever a, a, a novel like all these things come from the same root you know right. and uh and uh yeah i mean most likely if you're good at one of those things you know and if you can really break through and culturally say something that people haven't said before in let's say music you can probably say something that people haven't said before in furniture design like because you have that sensibility within you that's that's very that's very good uh to hear and like definitely when you talk about like i, I always hear kanye with with, with a, a miss a big misunderstanding a lot of people don't understand his creativity and he gets a lot of uh, no a lot of slack for, mm -hmm. for 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 being himself people will always uh resist and and give flack to and li sometimes in some cases unfortunately literally hate people who are free mm -hmm. that's what i've come to learn 
if there are, if you are if you are uh, showing uh, if you are if you are able to exert your full freedom, people are going to hate that. There are going to be people who come at you if if you're just if you're you're flaunting your freedom. If you flaunt your freedom, there will be people who are mad.